slide number three shows the neocortex or the human brain, the highest part of the brain, the newest part of the brain. And we need to understand how the brain plays a vital role in consciousness. It's not where consciousness comes from. Consciousness exists regardless of whether the body exists or not. The brain is sort of the antenna for consciousness. It's sort of the um, receiver transmitter for consciousness. Through the brain, we express consciousness. And as we'll see, through the brain and the heart, we express consciousness. So it's a vehicle for the expression of consciousness. It is not consciousness itself. So people shouldn't get that confused in this slide because I'm talking about consciousness as being aware of patterns. The ability to recognize patterns both within the self and in the realm in which the self operates. That's how I've always used the definition of consciousness. That's been the working definition for consciousness since day one on this podcast. So the brain is bilaterally symmetrical, the neocortex or higher brain, the human brain. It's bilaterally symmetrical. The left brain hemisphere is the intellectual part of the brain, or what we would call the masculine hemisphere. And I put the symbol of the upright pointing triangle, which in the ancient world was known as the blade. Okay, It represents a blade or a phallic symbol representing the masculine in the upright pointed direction. Very simple archetypal symbol. The left hemisphere of the brain largely, and again, the neuroscience is a lot more complicated than this very oversimplified model that I'm presenting. This is, a, it's, this is called a model that is true enough. It, it's a little, neuroscience is a little bit more complicated than what I'm talking about here. But in general terms, the left side of the brain makes possible logical thought, analytical thought, scientific thought, and math- mathematical thought. Okay, Linear thought, linear progression, physical tasks and activities, logic. We're not talking about super big picture theory, uh, uh, big picture thinking and uniting patterns. We're talking about laser-like focus, concentration, logical thought, language, math, science. That's what the left side of the brain generally governs and makes possible in a human being. And that is what we would call the intellect. That is the intellect. Now, notice that I didn't say that that's intelligence because I'm going to make the distinction between intellect and intelligence in a moment. Let's look at the right side of the brain, the neocortex. And again, this is review for those who have listened to this show. But again, I want to put on record and go into depth and make an extended version of this podcast because I have the forum to do this, uh, 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 this presentation, because I have the forum to do this in the form of this podcast. So again, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to go through this material and it'll take as long as it takes. So the right side of the brain, the right brain hemisphere, is the intuitive or feminine part of the brain. And I have it depicted here in blue with a symbol known as, in the ancient world, the chalice. This is an ancient archetypal symbol of the feminine womb. It was called the chalice. All right? So... You know, people have called it the grail because it's largely what is lost and not being actively used properly. It's been usurped. It's been taken over. It's been directed in wrong ways. We really get in touch with the true aspect of the sacred feminine. Then we're going to understand what needs to be done. We're going to understand that action is required. And then we're going to work together with the left brain hemisphere to actually take that action. And do what is required to reverse the trend that we're seeing take place all around us. So the right hemisphere largely governs creative thought, creativity, artistic tendencies. Okay? Holistic thought, being able to see big picture, the big picture, patterns. Really coming into awareness of patterns that are taking place especially historical patterns as well. 
It's about compassion, nurturing, respect for other people, understanding what rights are, extending rights and freedom to other people, not intruding on them. Because you have compassion and you want people's rights to be respected. So all forms of compassion, nurturing, moral understanding is largely governed by the right brain. And really, to be honest, that's governed by the prefrontal neocortex on both sides, right behind the forehead. It's often why people depicted the third eye being the spiritual center of the being right on the forehead. And again, people say, well, it's the pineal gland. It is the neocortex, the prefrontal cortex at the level of the pineal gland because the eye within the pineal gland activates when we balance these two brain hemispheres, comes online and truly activates the prefrontal cortex, which is where that's the moral center of the brain. That's where morality is processed. So the ancients were depicting things that they knew about the brain symbolically. When the chalice and blade come together, they form the blazing star, the seal of Solomon, the sun and the moon, because the left side of the brain is the sun, the masculine. The right side of the brain is the moon, the feminine. You put them together, it becomes the temple of Solomon, sun and moon together, sol, mon, sun, moon. That's the awakening of the third eye because now the brain is communicating across the corpus callosum between the brain hemispheres and then the prefrontal cortex is truly electrified and awoken and that's where morality is born. That's where the true objective knowledge of right and wrong is integrated and processed into the being. What controllers want, any form of a controller, that understand that this is how conscience is born through a balanced brain, what they want is to keep people in schism, in a mental schism. And this is also a, a spiritual schism. It's a schism with the heart. It's a mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual schism. And a physical one, because the two hemispheres of the brain aren't operating together as they should. So it's a schism on all levels. It's polarity on all levels. This is slide number four. I simply referred to it here as the mental schism, but again, we need to understand it's mental, psychological, physical, emotional, and spiritual. But for simplistic purposes on a slide, I wrote the mental schism because it largely does relate to the brain. As the brain goes, the whole being goes. And this is why there's such an attack on us through food, through chemicals in the food, chemicals in the water, chemicals in the air. They want to destabilize the brain because that's how they keep their control system going. Healthy people with a healthy brain aren't going to be controlled because both parts of the brain, the part, the part of the brain that governs compassion and the part of the brain that deals with action, right action and self-defense are going to be working together. So you're going to have a moral person that's willing to take action even up to and necessary of defensive use of force, which is what we're going to talk about later in this presentation. So mind control works by continuously dividing these two parts of the brain, all the qualities that are, that are active in these two parts of the brain, trying to keep them walled off and separate from each other and not coming together as one. So you want to keep either or both parts of the brain in chronic imbalanced in a chronic imbalanced state so when the left side of the brain is chronically overused and we're not using any of the functions of the right side of the brain chronic left brain imbalance which is continuously engaging in intellect only tasks and activities and functions okay it will lead to certain conditions and before i get into that i just want to say true intelligence is born from uniting the, these two hemispheres because we have the intellect which is the intel part intelle part of intelligence and then g-e-n-c-e -E, 
comes from genere in Latin, meaning to create. That's the creative side of the brain. So when people think, oh, scientists and doctors and lawyers are so intelligent. No, they're intellectual maybe. They can process large amounts of, of data and, fa and so-called facts and figures and things like that. They could do math well, verbal arguments and things like that, but they're not really intelligent. They don't have true intelligence. It comes from intellect and gents, the creative aspect of the mind, the artistic, the nurturing, the compassionate side of the brain, which many of those people do not have developed. And therefore, they don't really know the difference between right and wrong. When we put them together, that's when we develop true intelligence. So a dominator, a controller, one who is at the helm of the control system, of course, wants a polarization effect. They want people imbalanced toward one brain hemisphere or another. I call this polarization dialectics. Okay, You're keeping things apart. You're creating that arch structure. That is very hard to break down because you have some people here who are on the left side dominant and they're becoming like controllers and then you have the other side that is right side dominant and they're become they're exercising slave think they're going into slave think thinking that uh, uh the, this control system can never be brought down or we deserve this etc you know and just thinking like a slave who believes that he's the rightful property of the master would think so that's how the perpetuation of the control system works. You keep one aspect of the population in left brain imbalance, and they become control freaks and secondary psychopaths, and then you can keep the other side in right brain imbalance. So let's talk about what these states of imbalance look like. The intellect, the masculine side of the brain, the left brain hemisphere, if it's continuously engaged and the right side of the brain is not engaged, when you're in chronic left-brained imbalance, this will lead to things like rigid skepticism. Okay? Not, not real science, but just out-of-control rigid skepticism that becomes like a, a religion. Okay? You're not willing to look at the evidence even. You have a, actually have a belief system because this is the protocol, this fits in with what, you know the scientific community is saying is possible even if there's evidence to the contrary so rigid skepticism scientism again this is science as a religion i like rupert Sheldrake's talk about this and the book that he's written about science acting as a religion in the modern day it's no no, no different for all the people who worship science you know and again i realize this information pisses off everybody because most people are in one of these states of brain balance, imbalance or another. The people who worship science and think it's the, it's the be-all, end-all, you know, they're in a form of left brain imbalance. The people who, you know, are all super religious and think that they, their religion is the, is the totality of the truth, they're in right brain imbalance. This has nothing to do with science or religion. This has to do with truth about what is and what is going on within us and around us and that's not, that can be known and that's the knowledge that's worth pursuing that's the knowledge that is most worth pursuing knowledge of self and knowledge of what is taking place in this, the, the realm in which the self operates if we don't know that we don't know anything all other pursuits of knowledge are secondary to that not to say that they're not worth pursuing at all. I'm saying knowledge of self and the universe are worth pursuing first. And the knowledge of self has to come first. And understanding the brain and how it operates, the general ways that it operates, you know, you can get lost in the details and the specifics because there's so much about the brain we do know and don't know, more about it that we don't know. And I'm going to get into this in future shows. I promise people I'll be getting into the origins of humanity, the origins of the control system, the origins of evil, the origins of psychopathy, and, you know, telling that horror story. And a lot of people aren't going to like that. And it's, it's, it's going to maybe even shut some people down. 
But I've prepared the way with all these 140 some odd podcasts, and now it's time to start speculating a bit about what may have led to the cause cause of this human condition that we're in. The sick condition. Because until you can acknowledge the condition, you know, many people are not even ready to hear what the causal factors may have been. Because of what it's going to force us to reevaluate our entire belief system about what happened here in the ancient past. And what has traumatized us to the extent that we are traumatized that we can't seem to get out of this condition. We have to bring that trauma to the surface and that has to be done by looking without fear into what may very well have occurred here. So back to the slides. These polarization dialectics or mind control techniques work by keeping people in one form of brain imbalance or another. So continuing with what the intellect out of control leads to, rigid skepticism, scientism, science as a religion, atheism. And again, what I'm talking about here is just thinking that man is the highest power in creation. If you want to really boil it down, that's all atheism is. You know, there, it's a belief system that there's nothing other than man. That we're the, be- the best and brightest, we're, we're the highest source of intelligence in all of creation. And atheists don't believe in natural law. And there's nothing to believe in in natural law. They, they reject that notion that there is an intelligent guiding force that not only created the universe, but is actually governing the decisions that, that we're being given the result of of the free will choices that we make by this dynamic, governing, intelligent, creative force. They, they don't want to accept that. You know, because man could just do whatever he wants unchallenged. And right and wrong are just constructs of man's mind. You know? And it's, it's sick. It's sick thinking. It's totally left brain imbalance. The, someone who thinks like that is ill. They may not know that they're ill, but they're ill. You know, there's a force that sets the galaxies in motions, in motion. There's a force that sets the planets and the stars in motion. That force is the same force that ultimately governs the consequences of behavior. That people think they're separate from those laws. That there's laws governing everything that's operating in creation except them. Everything else is governed by law, except man. You know, man can make up whatever he wants. Whether it's right or wrong, do it. There's no consequences. Now, good luck with that. And this is what many atheists think. I'm not telling you to go believe in some religious god. What I consider as the creative force is something so infinitely more complex and majestic and intelligent and creative and powerful than anything that any religion has ever spoken of. That, that concept that I hold in my mind, that what religions have brought it down into is an insult to that force. And make no mistake about it, no man or group of men is it. We may be a tiny, infinitesimally tiny part of it. That's not to say that we're not an important part of it, but, uh, you know, basically what atheists are claiming is that man is the authority. You know, the that there's no higher power that's governing what we're doing here. Well, I think that's extreme short-sightedness, it's arrogance, it's ego run unchecked, which is what the left brain is all about. And when we engage in these chronically left-brained dominant ideologies that have no bearing in truth, it leads to authoritarianism. Because if there's no higher power than man, then hey, man can do whatever he wants. We can get to make up morality. That's a construct of man that doesn't exist in nature, you know. That's what people, most people think. You just do that experiment. Go ask people, is there such a thing as objective right and wrong that exists in nature? Or just ask them, they don't even understand what the word objective means. Just say, if all humans suddenly disappeared from existence, there was no earth, let's say. The earth just vanished along with everybody on it. And there was nothing where, where the third planet from our sun and our solar system was in a, in a flash, in an instant. Would right and wrong still exist? Most people will tell you no. That it's dependent on man. They'll actually, they actually believe that. And this concept more of moral relativism is what has led to the current police state. And this is what people have to understand. 
They need to understand it. If they want to get out of the police state. For some reason, people seem to love being kept pets. You know, they want a police state. That's the most amazing thing about this whole thing, is that people actually want to be free. Well, get, don't want to be free. They actually want to be enslaved. Well, guess what? That's all well and great. But please take that somewhere else. Because there are people here that do want to be free, and you have no right. You have no right in your ignorance to be allowing this police state to come on unchecked and therefore putting people that don't want to be in that cage with you in there with you. Make no mistake, you have no such right. You have no such right. People who think, oh, people have the right to think anything they want, including that slavery is okay. Absolutely wrong. You have a right to think anything you want as long as you're not advocating that other people have violence done to them and be held in slavery. Once your thoughts go there, you have no right to think that. And I'll tell you what, there are people who will openly come out and admit, I don't care if there's slavery. I'll do nothing. Members of my own family admit this. And seem to be proud of it, wearing it like a, a badge of honor. See the police state coming on and say, I don't care. And ha these people have children. They have grandchildren. And, and people don't think people are sick, that this is an illness. That this is an illness born of total imbalance of the brain and the heart. We need to understand it's an illness. So that's what happens if the left side of the brain is in balance. Let's move to the right side of the brain. Okay? The feminine side of the brain, the intuitive part of the brain, the creative part. What happens when it becomes chronically dominant? chronically imbalanced. We're constantly using those aspects of the brain, but we're not exercising the left brain. We're not thinking logically. We're not looking into truth discovery methods, of which the scientific method is perfectly a valid one. You know, we want to just let other people do whatever they want, never challenge them. You know, never openly say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. You have no right to do this. Not standing up for ourselves, not standing up for our rights. Believing in anything. Any new age mumbo jumbo that comes down to pike, I believe it and I start trying to practice it. You know, this is all forms of right brain imbalance. So this state of right brained hemispherical imbalance can lead to total naivete. You're not streetwise. Okay? being very naive like a child. And that's what the, the whole nanny state control system wants. They want people who think like a child and treat other people like children. You know, when, when the left brain's dominant, it causes people to become like masters, thinking that they're somebody's pa parental figure. When the right brain's in balance, it causes people to act like child, children, thinking that they're someone's property or, or ward. You know, blind belief can be brought on by chronic right hemispherical imbalance. People will believe anything. Religious extremism. You know, the whole religious worldview is largely born in the right brain. And, you know, part of this is thinking that God is controlling everything and there's no such thing as free will. I had somebody tell me there's no such thing as free will that we don't have free will. I said, you're absolutely wrong. We have free will. We just don't have free will without consequence. You have to exercise free will, choose, make a choice, and then act. And if you chose the right action, then the consequence will not be suffering. If you chose the wrong action because you didn't know the difference between right and wrong, the consequence will be suffering. That's how natural law works. Natural law is the deterministic component of creation. Like gravity, it's, de it's determined. It's operating. You're not going to stop it from operating. You're bound by it. Doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. Doesn't matter whether you know about it or not. It's very cold and impersonal. Natural law doesn't care about you. People want to think that the boundary conditions of this universe is so are so loving and caring. They're not. They're impersonal forces that the Creator set into motion. 
and then doesn't interfere with because they're the perfect boundary conditions for the, ex the acceleration of our evolutionary development once we recognize that they exist and that we are bound by them. They're not prison conditions. They are there to help and guide us. The boundary conditions called natural law that are existent in the universe. Though, though that's the deterministic aspect of creation. This war between determinism and randomness is also dialectics. Both are present. Again, I talked about this on day one or, or the second show. The deterministic component of creation is natural law. The randomness aspect of creation is free will, which we are gifted with. Because the Creator does not interfere with our choices. We have free will to act how we will. But it is governed by the deterministic aspect of creation called natural law. Which is the governing dynamic of behavior. Again, the, the people who are so naive don't think that there's free will. And they, they don't think that there's natural law. As if everything else in creation is going to have governing principles to, to set it into motion and guide it, except human behavior. That's completely, um, you know, uh, not affected by, by law. That's exempt. So this religious extremism as part of right hemispherical imbalance you know, uh, comes largely from this determinism that people believe in. That, oh, God cre controls every aspect of creation, including free will, and free will is an illusion. No, free will is not an illusion. People who want to think that want to give away personal responsibility to choose right action over wrong action. And therefore, they want to say, I don't have free will. You have it, just like you have an arm, a heart, a head, whatever. It's yours. You, you, you know, you, you can't pull your heart out of your body and still live. It's yours forever. You can't take your brain out of your head and still live. So you can't give away your personal responsibility. You can't take that away from yourself. Uh, it's an illusion to think that you can. It's yours and you're stuck with it. Get over it. Grow up. And this is the problem. That, that people actually believe these things. They actually believe that there's no free will or that there's no natural law. The people in super left brain imbalance don't believe that there's any such thing as natural law. The people in super right brain imbalance don't believe there's any such thing as free will. And these things play off against each other. You have people like Stephen Hawking in such left brain imbalance thinking that he's intelligent. He doesn't have a drop of intelligence. Not a drop. Stephen Hawking is a super intellectual. Maybe far beyond anybody else in the world. But he has not a lick of common sense or, or real intelligence. Not a lick. And I'd tell that to Stephen Hawking's face. The book he just wrote, talking about in the very first chapter that there's no such thing as free will. That free will is dead like God is dead. I mean, you got to be joking. And people look up to this guy and think he's intelligent, that he's smart. Not a drop of intelligence. You got no common sense there, Stevie boy. None. I don't care how intellectual you are. That's not what intelligence is. You don't un understand how it works and you think you do. Because you are a, worship, a worshiper at the altar of scientism and the primacy of matter. Hey, we'll look deeper into the core of the atom, the nucleus of the atom, and we'll find all the secrets of the universe. Good luck with that, Steve. Enjoy what you get. Because you're not looking into the place that's the only place you're ever going to find that answer, and that's the human soul. So, continuing with what right brain imbalance is, is it leads to slave think. When you're in this state of mind, naive, like a child, believing anything, okay, you are apt to accept all kinds of erroneous claims by dominators and controllers. And therefore, you will go into the state where you don't exercise your free will, where you don't exercise your rights, and you just accept, 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 accept. And this is 
key to this whole presentation is understanding this part of the brain, the imba imbalance generated by the right brain. When you're chronically in the right brain and never are engaging left brain functions, you'll never stand up for yourself. You will accept slavery. And this is what the New Age is all about, which is why I say I find the New Age movement infinitely more dangerous than Satanism. When people are reeled in by Levian Satanism or Satanism a la the Temple of Set and other schools of ideology such as that, it's dangerous. It's a very dangerous ideology. But let me tell you something. At least Satanists don't think that they're slaves. They, they want to be the masters. You know? Not that I'm saying that's right either. But I'm telling you, if everybody thought like that, that we're all masters and we're all kings and we, I don't want my rights trounced on, um, the world might get a little bit ugly, but um, it wouldn't be as bad as having the super form of right brain imbalance when you won't stand up for your rights or even think you have any. You know, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take people who believe in Satanism in the modern day the, the, the mini-me version of Satanism, as I call it, not the, the super elites, you know, Satanism and Luciferianism. I'm talking about people who buy into the, uh, the um, interface at the ground level, at the level of the public that is called Satanism. The, recruit, the recruitment system. I'll take those people any day over the New Age movement. And what the, what the New Age movement doesn't understand is this is put, their religion is put into effect at a higher level by the Luciferians that are ultimately controlling the whole planet. They're the ones who are putting these erroneous notions about the laws of attraction and natural law and spirituality into the world so that real spirituality will never actually be fostered. And therefore, their power structure will never be challenged because they're holding people in right brain imbalance by propagating this new religion, this quote-unquote new religion. There's nothing new about it at all. It's a, it's a eons-long strategy. And they've been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. Putting people into right brain imbalance through religion. And this is just the new world religion. That's it. The old religions aren't working anymore. They need to come up with something new. That's all the New Age movement is. Hence, quote-unquote, new. Because it's just another religion. And religion means to buy or to tie, tie up, tie out of the way, hold back, thwart from forward progress. We'll get into that in a moment. Let's move on to the next slide. When, when these two parts of the brain come together... That's what this slide was about. That's when the true all-seeing eye is ignited. The blazing star, the all-seeing eye, the true spark of the divine within us. That's born of true intelligence and conscience. The heart uniting with the mind. The mind, intelligence, the heart, conscience. This is bringing all of these different aspects of the human together as whole as a whole we're not divided anymore becoming a true individual means you're you're, you're whole individuated non-divided not separate you become one with your self with the higher aspect of the self and only when we do that are we truly activating the heart as well so i don't want people to think this is just about the brain either this is about activating care within yourself what you care about what you pay attention to and that does feed into the law of attraction not the way a lot of people think it does though again simply explaining more about mind control via brain imbalance let's look at the other structures of the brain we're talking about the neocortex which is supposed to be the executive command function of the brain it's supposed to be the command center of the brain this is where we're supposed to be guiding our actions from. When there's a specific form of brain imbalance, one of the other two complexes within the brain exerts what you could probably just simplify and call executive control. In other words, this other complex within the brain sort of takes over and becomes the ruler of the individual 
when in fact it's not supposed to be acting in that capacity. It's supposed to be acting when it's needed, okay? And it's supposed to be in balance. These two other parts of the brain are supposed to be in balance with each other. And when, when one side of the neocortex goes into a form of chronic imbalance, we'll see, as we'll see, one of these other parts of the brain become chronically dominant uh, among the whole triune part of the brain, the whole triune complexes within the brain. So these three complexes are the human brain, the mammal brain, and the reptile brain. And all of them are important. None of them should be downplayed. They're all necessary for our growth and development and interaction here in the physical form. This is what we need to understand. It's not about destroying any parts of these complexes of the brain. It's about using them in their proper aspect, in their proper role. And again, this is the temple, the so-called Temple of Solomon. That's why you always see three stages to any initiatory mystery traditions. It's a reflection of these three parts. It's a reflection of the three components of consciousness, thought, emotion, and action. Thought governed in the, the higher order thinking of the human brain, emotions, largely governed in the limbic system, the mammal brain, the mammalian brain, and then action, movement, survival instinct, governed by the R complex. All necessary components to function and to express consciousness. None of them should be the, the two lower parts of the brain should not be chronically dominant. So let's explain how they become chronically dominant. They're there to perform a vital function, but they're not to rule the house. The house needs to be ruled by the human brain in a state of balance. The higher brain, the neocortical brain, or what is actually really known as the telencephalon. But that's the whole gray matter part of the brain up on top. The neocortex is actually the outer area in which neural activity largely takes place. So when the left side of the brain is in a state of chronic imbalance, what happens is the limbic brain, the mammalian brain, the brain that governs emotions is shut down. That's why a dominator doesn't have any compassion or emotions. The part of the brain that actually sends out the chemicals and the neuropeptides that help us to experience emotion in the physiology is not working properly. It is basically largely shut down. It becomes suppressed. So chronic left brain or masculine dominance creates suppression of emotion and eventually roots us into the reptile brain. The executive command function center of the brain stops being the higher brain. It stops being the, the human brain or the neocortex and those command functions get rerouted. And now we're being ruled by the R-complex or the reptile brain. That's what a dominator becomes like, a reptile. Instinct. Action only. Survival. My way. Hoarding. Authority. I'm going to take what I want because I can. I'm going to do what I want to you because I can. This is somebody who's sick in the left brain. They're trapped in the left brain. They've been firewalled off from the other half of themselves, the sacred feminine component. They've been cut off from their emotional qualities because the actual limbic brain is damaged. It's not functioning electrically properly. It's like a computer that part of the logic board is broken. It's not going to function properly. These people are ill. They're sick. They literally have brain damage. I'm not saying that physic I'm not saying that metaphorically. It's physical brain damage that is provable. So what happens in the opposite instance? What if the, the right brain hemisphere is chronically dominant? What happens in these three major structures within the brain, these three complexes? Again, this is a very simplified model. The brain's 
actual operation is a bit more comp a lot more complex than this. But in general, this holds true. I'm not telling you this is all there is to know about neuroscience. I'm telling you this is the most important thing to know about neuroscience because it generally gets the picture of how the brain operates in a big way to people. And yes, this does hold true, and this is how the, the qualities of the brain function together with each other. <clears throat> when the right hemisphere is chronically dominant, the opposite happens. Okay? The, the, the same thing happens in the sense that the neocortex stops acting as the executive command functions of the brain, the command center of the brain, as it is intended to be when it is in a state of balance. When the right brain hemisphere is chronically imbalanced, and that's where you know the only functions that we're using, and we're not using the left brain, the, the R complex loses its power. That's what becomes suppressed. So the survival instinct is suppressed. The person won't stand up for themselves or their rights, and the kind of executive function of the brain gets shunted to the limbic brain or the emotional part of the brain. And this person becomes ruled by fear. They become ruled by their emotions. It's the kind of person who will take offense to everything you tell them, try to tell them. It's the kind of person who gets scared real easily at the first thing that they hear that's unpleasant. The person that doesn't want to look at unpleasantries taking place in the world. They think that by ignoring them or putting their head in the sand, somehow that's magically going to go away. They bought the new age, total new age bullshit notion that, um, you know, by by paying attention to something and becoming aware of its existence, you're somehow magically giving it power over you which is total nonsense and could not be further from the truth. So the chronic right-brained dominance, the feminine side of the brain, creates the suppression of our survival instinct and it eventually roots us in the mammalian brain in which we are ruled by our emotions. And you'll notice if we're ruled in either one of these other centers these other complexes of the brain, either the reptile complex or the limbic brain, what are you largely incapable of doing? Thinking clearly with the higher part of the brain that governs higher order thinking. So you're never going to understand patterns that are taking place. You're not going to know what's going on within you because part of you is broken and needs healing that you can't even see physically. It's not a physical injury, but it's, it is a physical injury. It's not a physical injury that's easily seen because it's inside the head, in the brain. And because people know nothing about how the brain works, they don't understand the majority of people are walking around with brain damage. And I'm not saying that metaphorically or symbolically. I'm saying that very literally. So we don't want to be ruled by either part of the brain because when the left brain is chronically dominant, the person becomes somebody who thinks that they're a master of other people. I call this master think. When the right brain is chronically imbalanced, you end up with a population that won't stand up for their rights. They don't have enough self-respect. They don't care about themselves enough to say, no, this is wrong. It's not going to continue, even if it comes to the point where I have to use physical force to stop this. And that's called a willing slave, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody who will not stand up for their rights is a willing slave. I don't care why you're doing it. Whether, you know, Just because you're a coward and you can't develop conscience, you're ruled by the emotional part of the brain, and you don't have any true self-respect to stand up for yourself and say no. And that's what the New Age movement is all about, making more people like that. That's why they want to propagate it as the New World Religion. Because they want people in this slave think mindset to accept slavery and to accept other people as their rightful masters. And you need to see no more evidence of this. Go to a New Age Expo. I don't care where the New Age Expo is in your area. Just go to it and ask the people there, do you think government is legitimate? The concept of government. And almost every single person will say yes because they're good little willing order following slaves. 
who don't understand their sovereignty and think that they're spiritual, think that they've come into some spiritual knowledge because they can sit in a lotus position and meditate for four hours a day. Well, that isn't real spirituality. Real spirituality deals with freedom. And anybody who is a so-called self-help person, a so-called guru, a so-called new age teacher that is not teaching people that the goal of spirituality is true freedom, sovereignty, and a balance between the brain hemispheres, understanding both the non-aggression principle and the principle of self-defense is no teacher at all. They are a deceiver. They are either a dupe who has bought a deception and is now propagating it unknowingly because they're not in a place of true knowledge and you shouldn't listen to them if you have any discernment. Or they're a direct deceiver who's peddling this bullshit deliberately to try to deceive other people and turn them into people who are have slave think operating inside them of them. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. This brain imbalance toward one brain hemisphere or another, this is slide number seven now, is the goal and the dream of the dominators of this world, of the occultists. So I want to just tell you a brief story. When I was involved in Satanism, and I was attending satanic rituals at different locations, largely in Pennsylvania and Maryland. Some of the higher level Satanists, or what you might call Luciferians, I don't know if they were that high up in the hierarchy, but people who were like, you know, whose house the ritual was at, or, you know, friends, good friends of them, or people who were coming in to uh, be a guest and, a, 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 you know, witness the activities of the grotto, were, were telling people that they were very influential in the publishing community for the New Age and telling people, wait until you see the information. And I'm talking about, we're, we're talking about here the um, mid-1990s mid 1990s telling people about all the books and all the information that they were going to be publishing and peddling through the so-called new age movement and they said we're we're behind this we're doing this because it's pushing people into the form of imbalance that we want to push them into i didn't understand it at the time because i was still in their minds i was still in the mini me satanic mindset this form of Satanism that is pushed to the the uh, the public. Again, it's a recruiting center. It's a, it's it's recruiting grounds for psychopaths, for people who have psychopathic tendencies. Which at that time, yeah, I would admit I did have tendencies toward becoming a secondary psychopath. My brain was messed up before I was able to heal it, and. They were telling some people in you know side conversations after the ritual because somebody brought up you know what New Asians think and believe, and openly telling people we're responsible for a lot of that material. We're putting it out there, and I believe them because they said, "Wait until you see what will be coming out in the next few years." We are going to give people completely erroneous notions of the laws of attraction. We're going to give people completely erroneous notions of how people create their reality. Because they know how this works. They know natural law. They know how it works. See, these are people who are so hateful of the fact that natural law exists. They look at it. Their worldview is, we're in a prison because we can't do whatever we want unchecked completely. We want to be able to kill, rape, pillage, murder with no consequence to us at a soul level or even in the physical domain. No consequence. That's their goal. Their goal is we want to be God. We want to be the creator. They're trying to usurp the position of the creative force in the universe by taking down natural law and replacing it with their law. That's what the Luciferians and the Satanists are 
attempting to do. They want to topple natural law. And they're actually very successful and very close to being able to do that. Which is why I don't underestimate these individuals at all. And I have respect for them as an enemy. And so should everybody else. Because they're the most intellectual people walking in the world. While I wouldn't say that they have true intelligence, so few people do on either side of the, the spiritual battle. Um, they are very intellectual and very well-read individuals and they do understand natural law. They know that it's in place and how it works. And that's why they're trying to insulate themselves from the consequences because they're trying to become God. And they do that by getting other people to carry out their behavior for them. They don't actually do the action. And therefore the karmic brunt of the consequences is not theirs. Again, people need to understand who bears the brunt of moral culpability. The order giver or the order follower. Well, these Satanists, more likely than not, never actually did physical harm to someone else. They're getting other people to do that dirty work for them. And hence why they call the military and the police their dogs. Because they're on the chain and following the command. They'll sit when they tell them to sit. They'll speak when they tell them to speak. Eat when they tell them to eat. Attack when they tell them to attack. Therefore, they consider them their animals, their pets. They, they're two phrases that Satanists in my presence, when I was involved with this, called the military were our pets and our dogs. That's it. Never referred to them as military men, military women. Never referred to them as the armed forces. Never. Our dogs. Never said the police department, the police forces, the law enforcement officers. Never once referred to them as any of those things. They called them our dogs. Because that's what they think of people who do that, that job. They are our order following dogs. We have them well trained. And also told me, you think you're going to tell people and they're going to accept that from you? They said if we came forward and told them that we're their owners, they wouldn't accept it from us. That's how perfectly programmed they are. And they're right. They were right. I can admit when I w I'm wrong. I'm telling you, they told me exactly what the truth was. So in a way, I don't really have a lot of built up anger and resentment and hostility toward them. Okay, because they are honest about what they're doing. They're very honest. It's a lot different than a person who says, I think I'm doing the right thing. And yet they're, do they're carrying out the work of these psychopaths, these madmen. I have a lot more bitterness and resentment against those people because they have the gall and the audacity to say they're doing something that's right. And they don't know the first thing about right. To somebody with a totally black, sick heart that wants to do evil and is telling people the truth about how they're doing it, I actually have quite a bit more respect. As, as, and guess what? I don't really care what you think about that. I don't care whether you think I'm wrong for thinking that way. I can respect that level of unity in consciousness. So I don't have a lot of ill will against them or want to see anything bad happen to them because they're not the ones who are doing it. <laughs> they're not the ones taking the action. The police are. They're the ones who are following these lunatics' orders because they're in a state of chronically imbalanced brain hemispherical action. They're both imbalanced in the left and the right brain because the, the police want to follow orders. That's right brain imbalance. They're imbalanced in the right brain as well as the left. Their brain's just totally destroyed. They want to be somebody's master, but they're someone else's slave at the same time. And that's what evil really wants. They want everybody to be a master and a slave simultaneously because they just want the perpetuation of master-slave think in one form or another. They want the perpetuation of slavery. So these people told people in these grottos that we are going to be putting forward tons of deception. We're going to flood the market with deception about these concepts so that people can't discover the truth about them. And they did it. 
They didn't just say that they were going to do it. They did it. And I'll bet you they threw a lot of this information right into people's hands and say, here, put this out. This is what people want to hear. You'll make a killing. You'll make a ton of money doing it. They were behind it. Guaranteed. Guaranteed a lot of these new age gurus who write all this crap that they write, they're not even really writing it themselves. They've been given the idea, like a planted a seed, and then, you know, the, the, the dark occultist steps back into the shadow after giving them the idea, and then they pen, pen the, the deception. That's how it works. But they said that there would be a huge, massive influx in New Age thought that was a total deception, telling people erroneous notions about how the laws of attraction work and how basically creating your reality work. And people have swallowed it hook, line, and sinker, and they need a, a hose and a funnel to shovel it down the gullet fast enough. That's how naive these people are. Which it always makes me laugh hilariously when people call me a new ager. I don't know what you're listening to. You're in the twilight zone or something. You know? You know what it is? It's, it's what I call the five second commenter. They watch five seconds of a video clip about something that I said, immediately related in their mind, have never listened to one podcast in its entirety, and then, boom, let me make my ill-informed comment from this completely erroneous, thin slice, because I don't have a brain that recognizes patterns, so I'm going to actually look at this tiny little five-second or thirty-second thin slice, and I'm going to say I know everything there is to know about everything this individual has ever said, and call him a new ager as a result. It's a bunch of clowns, a bunch of total clowns who don't know how to think and think they know something when they know exactly nothing. The way their mind control works, these controllers, is through one simple concept that I've already basically introduced. It's called dialectics. We're on slide number eight now. Dialectics are False choices. You're giving somebody a limited set of choices that are not the only choices that are available to them, but you're telling them that's all that exists. So, they will make a choice that is a false choice that leads to the same place that you wanted them to go all along. The mother who wants their child to just take eat a helping of vegetables at dinner and the child doesn't like to eat his vegetables says, do you want carrots or do you want peas tonight? And the child thinks, oh, I'm being given a choice. I can make this decision for myself like a big boy. Let me take the carrots because I like them better than peas. They're a little, you know, they're a little better tasting to me. Well, the mother didn't care what he chooses as long as he gets a, a, help, a serving of his vegetables. And that's it. So th that's a dialectic. And that's what we're seeing with government. That you're presenting somebody a choice that always leads to being ruled. And ultimately to being killed. Or have violence done to you. So this picture here is a little political cartoon about Republicans going one side, Democrats going the other side, and it's a cow being led to the slaughterhouse. doesn't matter which way he goes in, it all leads to the same place. The illusion of free choice when it comes to a dialectical choice. That doesn't mean illusion of free choice at a mass cosmic level. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about controllers want to give people a choice that they say is a choice, but it's no choice at all. It's a false choice. Which I, the words I put there on slide number nine, false choice. That's what dialectics should be seen as. You're giving someone a choice that isn't a real choice. They're not really exercising choice to choose something different. It's like saying, do you want wine, beer, or whiskey? Well, if you don't want alcohol, you don't want any of those things. You might want some seltzer water. You might want some filtered water. You know? You might want a cup of tea. There's other choices than those three things, which are being presented with. Say, do you want wine, beer, or whiskey? Well, I don't want any of those things. Well, you have to choose between one of them. That's a dialectic at work. 
Dialectic as a word comes from the Greek preposition dia, which means through or by way of, and the Latin noun lectus, which means choice. And that's how dialectics operate, by way of choice, by giving people a false choice. And as we're going to see, the New Age movement is another one of these dialectics. It's a false choice. Well, it's saying, well, you didn't like these religions, you know? You didn't like Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, Shintoism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, etc. You didn't like any of those. So, uh, here's another choice. And they're telling you it's not a religion. But it's a religion. It's absolutely a religion. And there's a lot of people trapped in it. A lot of people are trapped in it. They don't even understand it's a trap. They've bought these notions and they're tied to them. And that's their belief system. And it doesn't matter if evidence can be shown that it's not true. I'm tied to that belief. It doesn't, doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be practical in the real world. That's a belief. I'm sticking with it and that's it. There's two overarching dialectics, false choices, that they want to keep people in. For the chronically left-brained, you have to continue to be believing in government. Government is the first dialectic. It works through the left brain and binds the right brain out of the way. Because it's all about being a dominator. Okay, It's all about maintaining control over other people. And compassion doesn't really, really enter into this. Creativity certainly doesn't enter into it. Government creates nothing. Government exerts control through violence over people who disobey it. Whether what they're commanding is morally right or wrong, it doesn't matter to them. It's called our way or the highway. If you don't obey, violence is done. And anybody who doesn't see it as that simple, you're wrong. You're not perceiving things properly. There's something wrong with your brain. I don't really care how much offense you want to take at that. Go right ahead. That's the truth. Government works through the left brain. It binds the right brain out of the way. It is based upon the erroneous and dogmatic belief, not reality, not truth, but a belief. Okay? So, and as such, it is also a religion. Government is a religion. So, see, when, when it really boils down to all of this, the, the whole problem is belief and religion. This is what they did to people in the past. They dissuaded them away from looking into truth. And tried to convince people truth doesn't even exist. You cannot really ever know. Solipsism in general. So formulate a belief and an opinion. And that's what you want to hold on to. When it's all nonsense and it's all religion. We've got to throw opinions away. We've got to throw beliefs away. The only thing you need to believe in is that the truth can be discovered. And then go out and do it. Because it's there and it's staring us in the face and we're ignoring it. And as a result of that ignorance, we're, getting, we're already in a cage. Not going into a cage, we're going into the slaughterhouse next. And let me tell you, a lot of people will resist it. And there's going to be slaughter on both sides if we don't wake up. Because they're not going to put the American citizens into the slaughterhouse easily. Not without consequence and not without resistance. You can bet your ass on that. So it's based on this dogmatic belief. A belief. A religious belief. Dogmatic belief is religious belief. That there is a, such a thing as authority that is vested in certain human beings, which give, gives to those human beings special rights, quote-unquote rights, they're not really rights, but they think that they're rights which others do not possess. They, people who believe in government believe that certain people have rights that other people don't have. And I don't care how you want to twist it, word it, or justify it, that is what the belief in government is, the belief that some people have rights that other people don't possess. When the truth is, everybody has the same rights because rights do not exist in the perceptions of man. They exist in nature. 
They exist objectively and independently of man in reality. Therefore, a right can never be turned into a wrong, and a wrong can never be turned into a right. So, next slide is slide number 11. The left brain form of imbalance eventually creates psychopathic tendencies. When we stay in this state, we become at least a secondary psychopath. Now, I'm not saying you could become a primary psychopath. I'm saying, yeah, that's what we become, a secondary psychopath. Even in people who are not born psychopaths, a born psychopath is called a primary psychopath. They have psychopathy from birth. There's something broken in the human genome that actually creates born psychopaths in about 1% or less of the, po I think it's less than 1% of the population. That number is not accurately scientifically determined. But I would place the number at less than 1%. However, secondary psychopaths probably comprise over 10% of our society. And I'm being generous. I'm being kind in saying it's that low of a number. It's probably a lot higher than that. I'm trying to give people, not, 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 make people totally shut down and, and saying that my guesstimate is around 10%. So this form of left brain imbalance creates psychopathic tendencies leading some to the belief that they have the right to rule over others through violence. That they can do violence unaccosted. That they can do violence unchallenged. Because they have special rights that other people don't have. I can do this and not be punished, whereas somebody else does this and they'll be punished or jailed. Like the nerve of these sick psychopathic thugs that dared to try to that dared to put me and my wife in handcuffs for speaking and communicating to people with information. They think they have a right to do that. When if somebody tried to do it to them, they'd call it assault. Well, that's what was done to us. You're, they're the criminal. They assaulted us. They don't have any special rights that other people do, don't have to say you may not speak or peacefully engage people with information just because they're wearing a uniform and a badge. It doesn't give you a, a right that doesn't exist for another person. Are you insane? Is anybody insane for even believing that that could be? The, to believe that claim is a form of insanity. Anybody who believes that claim is themselves insane. That themselves, their brain is broken and not functioning properly. So, let's look at the opposite dialectic. The dialectic that plays off against the left brain form of the dialectic. This is the right brain dialectic, which is called religion. Slide number 12. Religion is the opposite dynamic in the mind from government. Okay? Government is a religion, but it works through the left brain. Religion itself works through the right brain. That's why people who believe in government are, are imbalanced toward both sides of the brain. They, they, uh, people who act within the, the capacities of quote-unquote government are really imbalanced toward both sides of the brain because they believe they have rights that other people don't and, and they also believe in the religion of government. They believe in its legitimacy, which couldn't happen if you weren't also imbalanced in the right brain hemisphere. So they're sick in both parts of the brain because government is also a religion and that comes from right belief in religion comes from right hemispherical imbalance and this is where the large majority of the population is also in this form of imbalance yeah we're imbalanced toward the left brain hemisphere too but more and more you look at the dynamic people accept some form of a religion and control system that's what religion is about accepting control not believing that you are, not knowing that you are sovereign. You are not a slave. That's what the word sovereign means. From Latin, super and regnum. We'll get to that in a moment. In a moment. Religion works through the right brain and binds the left brain hemisphere out of the way. The logical functions. Because with religion, you want blind faith. 
You want naivete and blind faith, which are hallmarks of right brain imbalance, which is what everyone who believes in government accepts. They accept, accept its claim of authority. I define religion in this quote that it can all be summarized that if we give up our free will and our personal responsibility to perform right action, some deity, government, guru, extraterrestrial race, or mystical force will save us from ourselves. <clears throat> we just have to give up our free will and personal responsibility, two things that can't really be given up. See, this whole thing is an illusion. And this is what people who believe in religion, including the New Age movement, believe. Again, I told you, somebody just told me that there's no such thing as free will. And, and kind of debunks personal responsibility as the way out of this mess. Thinking that we can somehow be rescued from this condition without accepting free will and personal responsibility. As something that we have to hold for ourselves, never attempt to give away and use wisely. Because that's hard work from where we're at. No, the Andromedans are going to rescue us, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you know that? Oh yeah, the ships are just, they're hovering in orbit, wait, waiting for the word from the, the commander from the, their home base. Yeah. Mithra's coming down to save us, one of the ancient per Persian sun gods. Don't you know that? The return of Mithra is imminent. Just like the return of Jesus is imminent. You know, this the sun savior is going to come and rescue us from ourselves. No, we don't have to learn the actual teachings of morality. We don't have to learn how natural law functions. You don't need to do a, do a bit of real digging into the self. No, there's going to be an external savior. Yeah. Yeah, right. Sure. Good luck, folks. You have been punked. You have been taken for the clown that you are wearing the big red floppy clown shoes. Okay? If you buy into any of that nonsense, I feel horribly sorry for you. This is the same thing people believe. Oh, you only need to believe on Christ as, as the Savior and that's it. You're saved. I mean, how could people possibly even be that stupid? No, because that doesn't involve any personal responsibility to act correctly. You're not putting the, the, the teachings of Christ into effect in, in your life, if that's how you think. And they'll be the first person to support government. Quote in Romans 13. It's called a fake-ass Christian. Is what it's called. Yeah, and notice that book, that, that quote comes from the book called Romans. Okay? The authorities of their day. Yeah. Now, the Bible was never tampered with. Don't worry about it. It's the completely undiluted word of God. Yeah. And it's meant to be taken literally as well. This is a child's view of ancient writings. A child's view. That's why they believe in a religion, because they're a child. Again, the hallmark of right brain imbalance is naivete like a child. And believe me, I know there's even a lot of people who have listened to my show, who hear me on other radio shows, they're in this state. I'm talking about you. Some people have grown up and understand how this dialectic works, but not many. <clears throat> Let's move on to the next slide, slide number 13. Right brain imbalance creates blind acceptance and collectivist groupthink. Again, blind acceptance, naivete, and blind belief. Collectivist groupthink. Leading to a condition in which willing followers will readily submit to, quote, authority. And this is where they need to keep the population in this state of right brain imbalance, believing in religion like the New Age movement, believing in religion like government. This is really the key, is the coming out of this kind of right brain imbalance and not be susceptible to going into the left brain imbalance either, to maintain balance between the brain hemispheres. Because we will not act as slaves readily submitting to authority and 
acting as cattle in total collectivist groupthink, which is what so many quote unquote liberals act like, you know, do anything the government tells you. They want a bigger state, they want a nanny state. But we won't go into the form of left brain imbalance where, oh, we need to, you know, be the policeman of the entire world instead of being an example. And that sends us into left brain imbalance, which so many neoconservatives are in. I'm going to talk about different groups of people and how they're in one of these forms of imbalance or another in a little bit. So let's move to the next slide, which is number 14. When you put both of these things together, when you put government together with religion, now you have a totally imbalanced mind. The psyche is completely imbalanced toward both the left brain hemisphere and its form of master think when left unchecked and the right brain hemisphere left in a state of chronic imbalance believing in religion with the naivete of a child blind acceptance <clears throat> submission to authority and going into slave think that creates a total mind in chains the whole mind is all bound up and padlocked the key is creating balance. The key, which I, I deliberately depicted the keyhole as green, lies in the balance between the two hemispheres of the brain. The color green is the frequency that exists between the two extremes of visible light frequencies of red and blue. The red's fre frequencies are toward one end of the visible spectrum. The blue frequencies are toward the other end of the visible spectrum. But green sits at the very middle of the visible spectrum because it is the color of balance. That's why it exists in nature. That's why the best foods for you to eat are green. <clears throat> it is the color of the heart chakra, the Anahata chakra in the Vedic tradition. It's the center point of balance in consciousness in the physical world as well, in the world of light. So, the key to unlocking that is balancing the brain hemispheres, not falling into either of these forms of brain imbalance or both. We have to use the whole brain and become a whole person, and that's how we will get it out of chains. It's chains. When, moving on to slide number 15, when the individual units of consciousness expressing themselves on earth individual people are all in the, are largely in that state of consciousness by which the brain is bound because it's in these two forms of brain imbalance we will get a world that is bound in chains this is the concept of the principle of correspondence one of the principles of natural law that as the microcosmic units called the people, go, so goes the whole society, the macrocosmic unit. That's how a police state gets created. You have to imbalance people's brain in the ways that I just explained. And that's how you could put an entire race of beings into a prison, which we're not heading toward, this is the state of humanity now. We're in these chains. To clear this up once and for all, and I, look, here's what I'm going to say when, when, about this. If anybody sends me an email about this, I will delete the email immediately without reading it, and you will be blacklisted. I will blacklist on the server your email address, so that no message that you ever send me again will ever be seen. You will be typing it and wasting your time for no reason. I'm going to preface this slide, these next two slides, with that comment. If anybody sends me an email attempting to debunk the etymology of this word after I do these two next slides, your email, if I just get the notion that that's what you're trying to do in the email, it will be deleted immediately without me reading it any further, and your email address will be blacklisted because I do not want my time wasted with bullshit and nonsense. Don't waste my time like that. Okay, I, I am busy. I have things I'm actually doing. Unlike most assholes sitting 
at home trying to debunk an, etymo an etymology. I have better things to do with my time than to write to somebody when the world is in a police state to try to debunk an etymology, which first of all is true. And I'm going to explain deeply and take some time to actually explain the reason it's true. And again, I don't care if this podcast goes for six or seven hours. I told people I would extend cer certain podcasts since I'm using this, for this type of a forum that certain things that I will want to go into and explain in depth, I will take my time with. So if you have to listen to it in sections, fine. So let's look at the actual word government. The etymological roots of the word government come from Latin. The Latin verb gubernare, okay, now there was no V in classical Latin. So the sounds, the consonants that the, the letter V come down to us from were P and B. You could see that they're similar in the phonetic way that you actually uh, make the sound with your lips of P, B, and V. All right? So in Latin, English words like govern, right? The, the V would not have been a V then because, again, there's no V in classical Latin. You would see it rendered as B or P. So just like in the word sovereign, there's no V in Latin, the sound would be a P, super, okay? And that becomes sover in the word sovereign. In the word govern, the word in Latin would be gubernare, G-U-B-E-R-N-A-R-E, gubernare. The, that's the infinitive form of the verb. The first person, uh, present tense, is guberno. Guberno, gubernare. And again, in certain Latin texts, texts in the modern day, you might see this rendered as guvernare because the B and V are interchangeable phonetic variants of each other. So if you look up guvernare, G-U-V-E-R-N-A-R-E, in a, in a good Latin dictionary, it will tell you that this word was rendered classically as gubernare, G-U-B-E-R-N-A-R-E. For those who have never studied Latin, they wouldn't understand any of that. I, however, have studied it pretty intensively. So... The word gubernare means to control. That's uncontested, and that is where the word govern comes from, to control, Con to externally control someone else, to govern. So this is where we get the term gubernatorial. A gubernatorial election comes directly from the verb gubernare. Gubernatorial means related to a governor or a controller, a governor of a state. And w when people elect these people who think that they're authorities, it, that's called a gubernatorial election, the election of a governor. The second part of government, ment, M-E-N-T, is where the, the morons of the world want to hotly contest and endlessly debate the etymological root of the word ment, ment of the, the, the part of the word ment, in any given word. Okay? Not just government. Th this word... This root um, component of a word, ment, a suffix, comes from the Latin noun mens, M-E-N-S. It's where we get the word mental from, M-E-N-T-A-L, mental. Because the word mens means mind, the mind, the psyche. Okay? So... Why would they use the term mens as the suffix 
to mean the state of or the condition of. Every word that has the word meant at the end of it, the word meant, the suffix meant, you tack it onto something to mean the condition of or the state of. So, bereavement is the condition of bereaving something. Containment is the condition of something being contained. And you can go on and on and on with all words that end in M-E-N-T. It's the condition of or the state of. Understood. Well, why would the people who structured the English language have made the word that means the condition of or the state of based upon the Latin word mens, mentis, which is the mind. And this directly relates to another principle of natural law. The very first principle of natural law. The universe is mental. Everything in creation that exists in the universe must, by law, have existed first in mind. Mind is the root of everything that manifests from it. Everything must flow from mind. The universe flows from the mind of creation itself, from the creator, from God, if you want to call it that. Fine. Every single condition that exists flows from a mental condition first. I'm speaking into a microphone, which is a piece of technology. This microphone had to exist as an archetypal construct in the mind of a human being before it, the technology ever came into manifestation. So the condition of this microphone existing is a result of a mental, a pre-existing mental condition and a mental construct that thought about the need for such a device. For the capture of the waveform that comes out of a human being's mouth when he speaks. And converting that into, into information that can be recorded and then played back. That happened. That state happened because it was first held in the mind. Well, a state of control can only first come about when that idea of controlling people occurs in the mind. And it is perpetuated through the control of the mind. Which is exactly what the word government means. The verb to control is at the beginning and the, at the end the word mind. So you can say the state of mind that leads to control or you can say actually controlling the mind and therefore creating the control that manifests as a result of a controlling of controlling the mind. However you want to look at it, it's still valid. That is a valid etymological breakdown of the word government. And it more clearly helps people to understand that any noun that we use that ends in meant means the condition of or the state of because that condition or state had to first exist as a mental construct. Hence, the makers of the English language deliberately chose the noun mens as that suffix. I mean, I don't see how anybody can have such little understanding of language as to not comprehend that easily. Because people don't study language. They, they haven't looked into linguistics a day in their life let alone looked into ancient languages to find out where words that we speak on a daily basis came from. So, look, I personally, I don't care where else you want to go to argue this point. Don't do it in my email box. I'm not interested. I don't think I know or have an opinion that I know where this came from. I know it. I don't want to hear it anymore. Okay? You want to think that that's my belief? I don't care if that's what you think. I know where the word came from and what it means. Because I know why the people who chose that suffix chose it. 
because they understood that first principle of natural law that everything that exists is a product of the mind a manifestation of mind so do not send email contesting this if i don't care if you believe that that's not the case go believe whatever you want do not put an email into my email box because it, it first of all to, to blacklist the email takes me literally one second to do I got a script, I paste it into the script, boom, it's done. It's gone. It takes no time from me. You're not taking any time from me. You're wasting your own time doing it. Because your email will be blacklisted in a second by me, and you'll be wasting time writing emails that I'll never see. Never see. So you want to blacklist yourself from the email box, and I do read my emails. I don't have time to respond to all of them. I get like 75 to 100 emails every single day. So I can't respond to every one of those emails. I'd be doing nothing but responding to email. I occasionally will respond to one here and there. But if somebody sends me information trying to debunk the etymology of the word government, you will be blacklisted from my email forever. In one second. I'm not interested. I have better things to do with my time. I've wasted too much of my time already, even in this presentation, explaining this distinction. So let's move on. So slide number 17 simply puts up the word mind control on top of this picture of the Congress building to help people to understand, yes, indeed, the word government does in fact mean mind control. Let's lay this to rest once and for all. That's what it means. You have to be under mind control to believe in it. The whole concept of government rests on the belief, the religious belief called authority. If you believe in this belief, you are a member of a religion. Your religion is government if you believe in authority. Whether you know that or understand it or not, you're a religious follower. Because government is also a religion. This all comes down to getting out of religion. The mind control that is religion. Authority is based upon a concept called jurisdiction. That where you are born, you are a subject of the laws of that place. The, the man-made written laws. And everybody will tell you, oh yeah, you're subject to jurisdiction. And they don't even know what the word means. They've never even looked into the origin of the word. Jurisdiction also comes from Latin roots. The noun jus juris. In Latin again in Latin there really was no J so actually in classical Latin uh, I wrote it down as J U S but it would be actually written I U S and Uris would be I U R I S the the genitive form Jus Uris means law it's where the word the English word justice comes from The second part of jurisdiction is diction. Now, diction in English simply means speech. That's what the noun diction means. Now, we get the word jury from jus juris in Latin. Second part, diction, comes from the Latin verb dicto dictare. Dictare means to speak or to say. So, what jurisdiction actually means based upon its etymological roots is to say the law to speak the law literally it means the law is what we say it is we speak the law literally that's what it means we say what the law is and again this is the notion that man is god and man is the maker of law. We are the authors of law. We are the makers of law. Forget the law that exists inherently in creation called natural law, the laws of morality, the laws of God. No, we make the law because we are God. There's no higher force than us. Right and wrong are constructs that exist in our mind, and we get to determine what they are. Not to discover them and live in harmony with those laws. We're going to write them. We're going to make those laws. We're lawmakers. We have jurisdiction. We say what the law is. 
and then we punish anyone who disagrees. Doesn't matter if our law is out of harmony with natural law. That's the word of God that is man. That's it. And re people in religion don't understand this. People who say, I have a religion. I believe in Allah. I believe in uh, Yahweh or Jehovah. I believe in, in the, the God the Father of creation. And you would dare to say, man is the lawmaker. I mean, you got to be kidding. I mean, that's direct cognitive dissonance. You're saying God is the lawmaker and we have to follow his laws, and then you're saying, I believe in government. Well, this is the whole concept in the Bible that you cannot obey two masters simultaneously. You either know and understand the laws of creation, which are natural law, about the difference between right and wrong, and you live that in every moment of your life, or you believe that man is the lawmaker. Man is God, and his laws are, are the laws of, of the universe. Because there's no such higher power as man. And this is what anybody who believes in authority believes. Whether they know it or not, whether they accept that or not. Man is not the authority. Man is, there's no such thing as jurisdiction. Being born into a certain area doesn't mean you're bound by the man-made laws that are written. Regardless of whether they're in harmony with nature's laws or not. You're, you are only bound and can never be unbound and are eternally bound by the laws of morality. That's it. And those laws always have consequence. Whether in this life or another form of existence and consciousness. You're never going to escape those consequences. It's an impossibility. It's like trying to say, I'm going to jump off this cliff and you know, with absolutely no mechanisms for assisting me to counter the law of gravity for a time, and I'm not going to hit the ground and nothing's going to happen to me. Well, good luck. Believe that all you want, it'll never make it true. Just like you could put your hand in a stove, you know, over a stove, and you think it's not going to get burned. Good luck with that. Keep it in the fire for a little bit and find out what happens. It's a law. You're not going to get around law. Cosmic law is always in effect. Once we start thinking we're the maker of law, we're going to write down what laws are and say you're bound to that because we said so. We say what the law is. You're under our jurisdiction. That's man saying he's God. And don't tell me that's not what it is. That's exactly what it is. And this whole cycle, this whole lesson is all about it's the creator showing man how much he's not God. Make no mistake about it. You want to know what the whole lesson here is right now on earth at this time in history? You're not God. You could sum it up real quick. Three words. You're not God. Get that message through your head. You may be an individed, individuated unit of consciousness within the body of God, but you are not God itself. You, you are not the lawmaker. The nerve of, of a, a Jewish person, the nerve of an, an Islamic person, the nerve of a so-called Christian saying that this is your religion and you don't know the first thing about any of them. If you think man is the lawmaker... You have your head up your ass if that's what you think. All right, I'm just going to start saying it totally, plainly, simply, and I don't care who doesn't like what they hear. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is, is it true or not? Get out of the whole emotional mind control dynamic. You don't like the way truth is presented. Oh, he's too bitter for me. He's too vitriolic for me. It's the same kind of people that can't hear a word somebody like Gerald Salente says because he gets riled up in saying it. I love the guy. You know, want to know why? You want to know why? He's telling the truth to people. Vitriolically. But nonetheless, it's true. I can sit, I can sit there and listen, listen to uh, Gerald speak for an hour because I, I, don't get, I don't get offended emotionally when somebody's saying what's true. I only care about the content of what they're saying. So I can listen to somebody scream through a bullhorn all day long as long as what they're saying is true. 
The notion that you have to sugarcoat truth to get people to accept it is the problem. This is what the new age is trying to say. This is the problem that people accept that and believe it. The new age movement won't call anybody on their bullshit and tell them that what they are doing and believing in is wrong. And hence the wrongdoing goes on unchallenged because they want peace. They value peace more than they value truth. They don't want to rock the boat, but they don't care that the truth's being buried and with it their freedom. No. There's no confrontation. No confrontation. And if the truth goes down the drain as a result of no confrontation, oh, well, so be it. No, you could have done something. And you're sitting on your ass doing nothing. Again, what this all boils down to, moving on to slide 20 now, is slavery. That's what this is. The concept of authority that some people are the masters who make up the rules, who say what the law is, and other people have to obey them. It's called slavery. I don't care whether your notion of slavery is just the ball and chain version and you think that's the only form. You're wrong. The concept of authority is slavery. The concept of government is slavery. The concept of taxation is slavery. The concept of prohibition is slavery. The concept of not being allowed to exercise your rights because somebody else tells you you can't and they, they're saying you have to obey them when they say you can't exercise that right is slavery. You're living in it. We didn't defeat slavery because we defeated the ball and chain version of slavery. You're still in slavery. The concept of authority, quote unquote authority, is an illusion. It is not real. It is an illusion. It is based in belief. It is not based in nature. It is an illusion of a diseased psyche. In other words, a diseased and imbalanced mind that is based entirely in violence and built upon the erroneous and dogmatic belief, not truth, but belief, that some people are masters who have the moral right to issue commands while others are slaves who have a moral obligation to obey the masters. That is what government is, that is what authority is, and there is no better definition for slavery than that. Some people are masters who have the moral right to issue commands, and other people are slaves who have a moral obligation to obey the master's commands. That is the very definition of slavery. And if you can't con conceive of the notion that this is what slavery is by definition, again, I will only say there is something wrong with your brain. You need, fit, you need help. You're sick. You're, you're not just not... It, it, when people say, you say uh, that something's wrong with me or I don't understand because I don't get it. No. I say that because it's true. That one thing means another. One thing actually means another thing. You can understand where a person's brain at, is at by the nature of what they say they believe. So if somebody says, I believe in authority, I automatically know you're not mentally well. You're sick. There is all, I know immediately upon you conveying that information out of your mouth and saying that you believe in that, that there's something physically wrong with your brain, that you are existing in that state of brain imbalance. Your brain cannot be well. It's an impossibility. You know, if, some, if someone can't pick up something that weighs a pound, you know, their muscles cannot be operating properly. You know, because... All human beings have the capability of picking something up that weighs one pound, unless there's something wrong with their physiology. Well, the same thing is true. If, something, if somebody really understands what slavery is, they cannot support it. If somebody has a balanced brain, they know what slavery is, and they know that it's based in the concept of authority. So anybody that believes in authority cannot have a properly functioning brain. It follows logically. 
So again, get as offended about it as you want. If you want to do something to get your mind well, learn that all forms of authority and government are slavery and always have been. You need to break down the conditioning that has led you to that erroneous belief system. And that's all it is. It's an erroneous, religious, dogmatic belief that has no basis in nature. It has no basis in the real. No basis in truth. Because what you have to accept to believe that notion is that people are slaves, rightfully. That the concept of slavery is something that is right and should continue indefinitely. That is what everyone who is a statist believes, whether they know it or not. They may not even be consciously aware of that. And everyone who is a statist has brain damage in some form or fashion at some degree or another. Some may be very sick and some may have you know, just a little bit of illness still present and maybe are in the process of working their way out of it. But everybody who believes in statism or what I'm going to call archon, archony or archonism is at some degree mentally ill. They have not healed their psyche. What everyone who does not acknowledge that government is slavery does not understand, and what they need to understand that everyone on this planet is, regardless of what is believed, okay, is what's on this slide, a sovereign. Everybody who believes in authority does not really fully understand this concept. And they, a lot of people think that this is a dirty word of some kind. He's claiming to be sovereign. How dare he? Imagine that. Because they don't understand the meaning of words. They don't understand where words they are speaking came from. The word sovereign is derived from Latin also. The adverb super, and again, here we see this phonetic... Um, um, su uh, su um, what's the word I'm looking for? We see this f uh, phonetic um, changing, a um, substitution. That's that's it. Okay, this phonetic substitution of v, the modern v, in the ancient world, in ancient Latin, there was no v. Okay, so that sound is represented by the p, p, in place of v which we just saw in the previous example looking at the etymology of government, a B in, a pla in place of a V. So again, P and V used interchangeably in the ancient world in many cases to represent the sound in modern language, such as English and other languages, that we represent with a V. Because that V sound didn't exist in their language. So sovereign, the first part, S-O-V-E-R, comes from the Latin adverb super. Super means above. The second part of the word reign, so you're putting them together with one R, okay? Sovereign. Sovereign. The second part, reign, comes, to, comes from the Latin also, the noun regnum. Regnum means rulership or control. It comes out of the Latin rex regis, the noun meaning king. Rex regis or regis is the noun for king or ruler. And then regnum, which comes out of regis, regis, regal, okay, means rulership or control. That's the king's rulership. His reign is what it comes down to in Germanic and then English language. So this is based in the Latin regnum, meaning rulership or control. Externally, direct rulership of others, meaning I'm the king, you are my subject. I make the law, you have to obey what I say, my jurisdiction over you, because I'm your ruler and you are my subject, my slave. When we put these two words together, sovereign, it means above rulership or control. 
one who is not a subject or the slave of another. That's it. So in the next slide, 22, I just put the word, the words, not a slave. That's what the word sovereign means. It means not a slave. If you ask every person, just go and do this experiment with your family members. Just ask them, are you a slave? And none of them will want to admit that they're a slave. They'll say, no, I'm not a slave. And it, it, the correct response is no. Because regardless of what anyone believes or even what the condition is of other people believing that they're masters and other thugs um, supporting the masters in their claim that they are the rightful authorities, that doesn't make it true. So are the conditions of slavery in place? Yes, but that doesn't mean anybody is a rightful slave. There is no such thing. Never has been, never will be. Isn't now. The concept of a slave and a master of a slave is inherently illegitimate because it's inherently immoral because it's based in violence, which is out of which is in direct opposition to natural law, to moral law. Therefore, there is really no such thing in creation, legitimately, in nature, in reality, as a slave. That doesn't exist. No one is a slave. No one ever has been a slave. No one ever can be a slave. Can be. It's an impossibility for a slave to actually exist. The people who were taken from their homeland in Africa and brought over here immorally to this land during Civil War period and before, they were kept as slaves. That doesn't mean that that's what they were as people. It's not saying the conditions that we call slavery didn't exist. I'm saying that in reality, those people are not legitimately slaves. Never were. There's no such thing as the le legitimization of slavery. They were free then. Even though they were being held, other people believed the condition of slavery was legitimate and they were being held as if they were slaves. What I'm trying to express is that that can never be true in reality. It never makes it true because people do this immoral behavior. It doesn't mean that they have a legitimate, a legitimate claim on that person's body. In fact, they were not their property. It never could be their property. They could only claim that and other morons who don't understand freedom could accept that claim. The people who helped them to take those people into slavery, into bondage. And unfortunately, and it's true, and many people don't want to admit that it's true, when generations, new generations had come up, yes, the people who were directly taken over here from Africa knew that, that they were being held as slaves against their will. When they had children and new a new generation came up, they were so brainwashed by the people who ran the plantations and factories where they were put to, in the manual labor and the indentured servitude, brainwashed them so well that they actually accepted the claim of slavery and believed that they were the legitimate property of their master and like l thought that they legitimately should be punished for running away, trying to get away from that deplorable, immoral condition that they were being held in against their will and thought that running away would be stealing themselves from their rightful owner, that their body was the legitimate property. Yes, that did exist. People who want to ignore that and say, no, they, they even knew that they were slaves. You are incorrect and you are ignoring historical fact. Many slaves who were being kept on plantations in the South during slavery period in the Civil War era here in this country and before that, uh, and long before that, actually believed that this was a legitimate claim. Now, many of them did not as well, but that doesn't mean that many of them did. Many of them bought the notion that this was, was legitimate and should continue. That's how brainwashed through the lack of education that they were given. They weren't allowed to read books, engage in philosophical discourse. They were whipped and put to work in a field. I mean, the, the, the nerve that anybody believes that this is ever legitimate. And you know what we have today? We have a population that still believes it's legitimate. Just because they have a harder time seeing that what the conditions we're living in are still slavery.
You know, they want it to continue because they don't want their personal responsibility. And I'm tell, I tell, tell people this, and they get angry and defensive and mad and want to lash at me when I tell people when the slaves were released in America, officially, many of them did not really want to go off and make a life for themselves and be free. Because of course, they, m almost all of them didn't really know how to read or write, had only manual labor skills. It's true. What kind of a life at that point, at that level of ignorance that they were kept in, would they eke out? And it's a very scary situation. They almost preferred the comfort or the, the comfort isn't even the right word. It's the familiarity of their chains to the unknown aspect of actually governing their own life. And again, I'm not attacking any group of people or race or anything like that. I'm saying that this is the mental mindset that when somebody's been held in captivity for so long that develops. It's, it's Stockholm Syndrome. You identify with the con your condition, your oppressive condition, and with your masters and, and owners, so-called claimed masters and owners, and that's what people want to continue in their ignorance. And yes, that is also historical fact that many slaves took that mental attitude upon their release. I'm not, I'm, it's not an attack. It's, it's historical fact. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm telling you how it w actually was. And of course, many of them did not take that position and absolutely wanted to go to work making a, a real life for themselves and caring for themselves and building a family and you know learning and growing as individuals. Many took that attitude. So I'm trying to say both of these attitudes are still alive today, alive and well. And there's a problem with one of them. One of them is not based in right. It is always wrong because you are supporting, for whatever reason you're doing it. Oh, the government provides this assistance to me. Oh, the, uh, my child's in a government-run school. It's free education. I wouldn't have to pay for an education. I don't care why you're doing it. No matter what reason you're doing it, it's still support of slavery. It is the support of slavery, whether you understand that or not. And all I'm trying to say is that at all times and places, slavery is immoral and illegitimate and should be ended. That's another thing. A slave master wants people to accept, you're better off with me. I take good care of you. You don't want to be on your own, do you? Oh, you'd have to make hard choices. You'd have to make, you know, do other forms of work that you're, you're totally responsible for what you get. You know, here, the master is the one who's responsible. All you're to do is to just listen to his commands. And that's why police do what they do. They think that they can hand over their obligation to think. It's a moral obligation to think for yourself. It's more than just personal responsibility. You have a moral obligation to think for yourself and make judgments about what right and wrong behavior actually are based on knowledge of right and wrong. And then an obligation to choose the right action over the wrong action. What a person who wants to be eternally kept as someone else's slave or pet wants to do is to try to give away that personal responsibility to make that free will choice themselves. They want to hand that to, think that they can hand that to someone else. And it can never be done. You can only claim that you're doing it. So what we're really looking at here is all of the things that are holding us back from being truly free are, is some form of a religion. And again, this is not to say that there isn't something such as a positive form of religion as well. There is true religion. There is false religion. And I'll briefly go over both of these concepts. Okay, Religion, again, let's break down the word. I'm going to do this a lot. I do do this a lot because it's so important to understand the words we speak and where they came from. Why the people who structured the English language chose the ancient language words that they chose to structure modern language. They weren't doing this arbitrarily. It was a very deliberate design. 
to try to get people to understand what the words mean. The word religion comes from Latin, the verb religare. So, ligare means to tie. Religare means to tie back. Because the prefix re means back or again. So when we put them together, religare means to tie back, to hold back, or to thwart from forward progress, to bind, to hold back. So what is false religion? And this is the definition of false religion, to tie back, to hold back, to thwart from forward progress, to bind. What is it binding? What is it holding us back from? What is it tying us back? In what way is it thwarting our forward progress? Well, it's tying us back from truth. It's giving us beliefs in place of truth. It's saying, well, this is a belief. This is an opinion. It's as valid as knowledge. No, it's not as valid as knowledge. Knowledge isn't based on opinion or belief. Knowledge is based on truth, which does exist and is discoverable. <clears throat> So what religion holds us back from is forward progress in consciousness, in our understanding of ourselves and the universe. This is why it has to go. It has to go. All religions. The only religion needs to be truth. That's what we need to be tied to. That's what we need to be bound to, what the truth is. Not what a religion says is true, or says you should believe, but what is actually true, because you determined it, you discovered it. And the main thing that unites us to that is the understanding of natural law, or morality. When we understand morality, we become united with truth. We are bound back to that which is true. Because... <clears throat> When we fall away from morality, we have fallen away from the truth about right and wrong. <clears throat> so what I call religion is a control system, a control system of control that is based in unchallenged dogmatic belief which holds back the progress of consciousness. That is the definition of false religion. When we make truth our religion, we undo all of that. We undo those belief systems, we go with the truth wherever it leads us, and we unite with it. And then we move forward in consciousness and we become freer. We want to ignore the truth? Going into a deeper cage. As the mind goes into a cage, society goes into a cage. The principle of correspondence. <clears throat> 